Well, I'm uh, running uh, the Bitcoin Foundation in Argentina and helping the community grow in Argentina and also in the whole Latin America, helping others uh, build communities around Latin America. Um, I, I've also been involved in many Bitcoin projects that uh, mostly focus on uh, helping the adoption of Bitcoin or, or raise awareness of Bitcoin. Uh, so that's, and my background is I'm a web entrepreneur. I was uh, one of the pioneers of the web back in the 90s in, in Latin America as well. Well, the feeling is very similar. Uh, I think uh, I, I didn't have, uh, back in the 90s, I didn't have uh, a business uh, vision. I, I was more into it for the explora exploration aspects of the of the web and how the internet would impact on people's life. But at the essence, it was always about uh, using technology to change the way people live their lives. And indeed, we know now that the web had a huge impact, um, you know, getting the knowledge to, to, the, to everybody and also the social networks uh, that in a way de-intermediate uh, the power of voice. And I think Bitcoin has the same component for uh, the financial system. It's, it's a way to the intermediate the access to the financial system. So in my head, everything is part of the same process, not separate things. Um, and, and I feel the same. I feel you know, this is going to change people's life in ways we cannot imagine at this point. <laughs> well, Argentina is big in Bitcoin because Argentinians have passed through all sorts of uh, crises in the financial area. Uh, so we learn to protect ourselves in many different ways. Uh, we also are very deep into uh, technological adoption. We were leading uh, cable adoption, mobile phones, internet. Uh, and I think that uh, crossroad between technology and, and finance is what Bitcoin represents. So I think Argentinians are embracing it uh, in, a, in a big way because of that. I would say so, even if they are not, of course, we are not all uh, macroeconomic experts. I would say we are all aware of the impact of uh, macroeconomics into our day-to-day -day lives. So that makes us uh, fertile ground for that. Well, the thing is, uh, we have a 25% uh, inflation per year, uh, which is mostly due to the amount of money being printed every year. So, again, uh, we, we manage to work and live with that in a proper way. We, we just adjust our minds to that and adjust our business to that inflation so we can live with that. It's not that for us uh, that's chaos. Uh, but again, you know you are losing value every day because of that inflation. I would say adoption in, in Argentina is a grassroots thing. It, it starts from the base and goes up. And in the States it's starting on the startups and entrepreneurs and more on the, uh, I wouldn't say corporate, but yes, on the enterprise level. So I would say Argentina is slower, but it's P2P and will have a different approach to Bitcoin adoption than the one we will see in the States. Well, in Argentina we have 50% of the economy is an informal economy. Uh, so I say Bitcoin also has great potential to, to be a means uh, for that economy to happen. Um, like in the rest of the world, we know System D is the second economy in the world with almost 10 trillion USD per year. So I think Argentina has a big potential there as well. Well, I, I haven't had the opportunity to go to Africa, but I think for sure Africa it's, it's also is the best target for that grassroots uh, movement. Um, in Latin America, I would say there's a lot of potential 
of using Bitcoin as a remittance system. Uh, and many people is looking at, after remittances between the first world countries and Latin America, but I think the huge potential is within Latin America. There's a lot of movement between, I don't know, uh, better developed countries like Chile to Bolivia to Peru or from Argentina to Paraguay. And in that sense, Bitcoin can be uh, a very good vehicle to drive those economies and, and to give more money to the, ones, to the people that really need it instead of uh, using that money to pay uh, transaction fees. Well, at this point, uh, there's more fear than anything. Central banks and politicians, regulators, don't really understand what is happening with Bitcoin. So mostly they, they guide their feelings uh, through just what they see in the media or some advisor that doesn't have deep knowledge into what Bitcoin is and, and where it's going. Uh, indeed, that's part of our you know, primary objectives during this uh, following year to get in touch with government officials, to politicians of all sorts of uh, line, ideologies and try to explain them exactly what Bitcoin is and, and how it can help. <laughs> That's a good question. I, I think anything that is decentralized is more trustable than anything that is centralized. I mean, centralization, um, accumulation of power, leads to corruption. Uh, total accumulation of power leads to total corruption. I, I would say that's a problem in, in every pyramidal uh, model. I think, as I said, the human beings are transiting from uh, pyramids of power into a more uh, a, a network of uh, share agreement. So I don't think it only applies to government. It applies to any structure that has a pyramid scheme. Not really. They can really make it hard uh, to get, but they cannot shut down the whole network because it's very resilient and it's has the same logic as the P2P file sharing. So at the end, uh, in any effort is uh, fear chilling. Sí, lo que les diría es que se, les diría que, digamos, no dejen de, de dedicarse, a, de, no dejen de aprender acerca de Bitcoin y de entenderlo porque aunque Bitcoin no sea la solución definitiva, sin duda va a transformar la manera en que nos relacionamos en el, con el dinero. Y así como ser un eh, ignorante de los medios digitales nos deja fuera del mundo, ser un ignorante de lo que es las finanzas, también va a ser un diferencial que nos va a dejar fuera del mundo. In the fall of 2008, the world financial system nearly fell apart because of the incompetence and instability of the banking system. With Bitcoin, anyone can send and receive any amount of money anywhere in the world basically for free. And there's nothing that the, the big banks or politicians can do to stop it. At the Money 2020 conference, there was a Bitcoin panel where four Bitcoiners were speaking. And behind me were executives and chairmen of a board of several different credit unions. And one turned to the other and said, these guys don't know the true meaning of evil till we fuck them. You see, I just want your cash.